。呃，对于这个新疆棉的事件，我觉得首先，可能他们觉得。我采摘的人，我们在奴役他们超时工作，或者说一些不公正的工作，因为这些那么多品牌，其实在中国都是比较影响力比较大的一些大品牌了。我觉得他们既然在中国已经这么久时间了，应该知道中国有哪些底线是不可以碰的。Cancel culture hits differently in China. Rather than being a grassroots initiative, it's often a top-down directive. Over the past few years, there's been an increase in the number of international brands getting boycotted in China over perceived insults towards the country. In 2019, in the midst of the pro-democracy protests in Hong Kong, it was the NBA in the hot seat. After a team executive showed his support for the movement in a now-deleted tweet, in retaliation, government-run TV channels cancelled broadcasts and online streamings of games. Retailers halted the sale of NBA merchandise, and many Chinese celebrities walked back their endorsements. However, the Chinese government was forced to turn off the tap of cancel culture when this clash interfered with U.S. trade talks. In March 2021, it was H&M, Nike, and Adidas, amongst other foreign brands, caught in the crosshairs of politics and patriotism. These brands had previously stated that they do not source cotton from Xinjiang due to allegations of forced labor. Last year, a report by the Center for Global Policy suggested that more than half a million people from ethnic minority groups in Xinjiang have been coerced into picking cotton. Xinjiang produces more than 20% of the world's cotton and 84% of China's. Although brands and consumers around the world were shocked by the forced labor accusations, many Chinese shoppers doubted the allegations made in the report. Hello, I'm Yu Zhong. Today, I'm going to show you how to cut the truth. Then, the report has some inaccuracies. I don't think it's very good to show the truth. Then, it's more likely that they want to show the truth rather than to show the truth objectively and not to show the truth objectively. The state first called out H&M in a Weibo post from the Communist Youth League. The timing of the post appeared to coincide with the ratcheting up of tensions between the U.S., Europe, and China over Xinjiang. During the initial outcry, H&M's Chinese brand ambassadors quit. Netizens called for the boycott of a brand that was attempting to discredit the country, and H&M was taken down from e-commerce sites. As well as a destination on a ride-hailing app. Soon after, Nike and Adidas's celebrity endorsers jumped ship, and an old video of burning Nike sneakers went viral online. As a result, sneakerheads like Fu Yu Zhou are now being torn between their nationalistic pride and their favorite brands. As an online influencer and sneaker reseller. He has made his decision. I can also, as a Chinese person, I think I have to have my own resistance. So, I bought Nike and Adidas before the incident. When the incident happened, I removed them. I think these brands say they don't use Xinjiang cotton. Actually, in a big way, they are cutting down their sales volume. Because they know that if they buy Xinjiang cotton, many Chinese consumers will not buy their products. So, I hope they can understand their own mistakes and their own views. And I hope they can apologize to the Chinese consumers. So, they may even come back to the Chinese consumers. Some experts believe that, for Chinese authorities, the domestic benefits of cancel culture are twofold. Consumer boycotts are a convenient solution to release pent-up tension and are less risky than anti-foreign street demonstrations, which disrupt social stability. It also helps to bolster local brands' appeal. 
as international sports brands were being cancelled in the country, domestic sports brands Li Ning and Anta both rallied online, in store and on the stock market, riding on the nationalistic rhetoric with their Xinjiang cotton clothing lines. 啊，抵制新疆棉这个事件是对于国潮崛起的一个非常好的时机，可以让更多的年轻人看到自己国家的品牌的亮点，然后去支持它，成为他们的粉丝，让他们变得更好。As Chinese consumers become more outspoken and driven by top-down pro-China messaging, some experts believe that it's wise to listen to impassioned Chinese consumers over their Western counterparts. Sales in the Adidas store on the country's largest shopping platform, Tmall, slumped by 78% from the previous year, one month after the scandal, while Nike's dropped by 59%. Sales in Greater China make up almost one fifth of Nike and almost a quarter of Adidas's net sales. Anta and Li Ning's sales both skyrocketed when compared to the same period last year. Chinese consumers have always been very patriotic, but it's actually increased during the post-COVID world because China has largely contained COVID, while other countries like the United States and France and India are still rife with COVID and still battling it away. So younger Chinese consumers are starting to want to buy Chinese-made brands made by Chinese for Chinese. They're also very sensitive because they feel that the United States and European nations like the United Kingdom. Are trying to contain or destabilize China's rise, and so right now you have to look at the backdrop of the boycotts over H&M, Adidas, and Nike. Is really largely because Chinese consumers feel that the companies and the countries are lying and trying to hurt China. As a result, they're saying we don't want to buy H&M anymore. We don't want to buy Adidas anymore. Instead, we want to buy Chinese brands like Li Ning or Anta. Young Chinese consumers are propelling the domestic economy forward. Foreign brands such as Muji have already aligned themselves with Chinese sentiment by showing support for Xinjiang cotton and promising to continue using the commodity in their supply chains. At the end of the day, the risk is a lot higher、um, by. Offending the Chinese consumer, they're so patriotic and nationalistic right now that they will boycott you immediately. It's almost better to risk upsetting Americans and Europeans than it is to risk upsetting Chinese,、um, because at the end of the day, most Americans have no idea what's going on in the rest of the world. They're fairly unsophisticated when it comes to international affairs. As China becomes more nationalistic. And wrapped up in a culture of cancelling brands that don't conform, consumers are left with little room for an alternative opinion. Social media has also increased the popularity of cancelling. Because now, just many online KOL will will post things. Uh, also not sure if they are really loyal to China, but they are maybe just for clout. So I think this kind of environment will cause a kind of cyber death. Is that you are very difficult to. 说任何一些和和他人不一样的想法，然后会让你那个赛博生涯从此飞向这个污点，然后很难再走下去。我觉得出了这个事情之后，如果再穿这些呃被认为是所谓反华的牌子，呃，肯定是会与身边的人是会就是会有一些矛盾吧。我认为是会。There is concern that Chinese purse strings pulled by the Chinese authorities. Will define the future of global leadership and ethics as brands buckle under pressure to toe the party line. The Chinese government doesn't really need to do much to turn on the tap of nationalist sentiment. Oftentimes, all that needs to happen is for one government organization to denounce a foreign company on social media, and then netizens will take it from there. Young Chinese consumers. Who have only ever experienced China's rise to power are deeply nationalistic, influenced by their patriotic education, which focuses on China's humiliation at the hands of foreign powers.
patriotic education started only in the 1990s. So compared to older generations of Chinese who were not exposed to it, today's youth do seem to be more sensitive to foreign criticism and insults. But another reason arguably also has to do with shifting expectations that have come with China's rise. As China has become more powerful, people want to see China stand up for itself and push back against foreign criticism. I do think that we'll continue to see more of cancel culture in the future. And I do think this is a worrying trend. It makes it more difficult for foreign brands to speak out against human rights abuses, and it encourages them to engage in self-censorship. But at the same time, the Chinese government should also worry about the broader effects of cancel culture because the latest consumer boycotts of H&M and Nike have only brought further international and domestic attention to China's policies in Xinjiang, which I don't think the Chinese government wants.